welcome to our first preview show of the new season. Chris Temple is back alongside me as we look forward to the start of the Premier League. Here's what's coming up today. We'll be looking back at the Cherries in pre-season and discuss some of their games they've been playing. We'll also be looking at the five new additions to Eddie Howe's squad. And finally, we'll be looking ahead to the season opener against Sheffield United tomorrow. Well, we're going to start by looking back at the pre-season schedule. But before we do all of that, it's good to be back, isn't it, Chris? It is good to be back. We've got some very sort of Bournemouth summer weather here going on behind us. Hopefully it'll be like this tomorrow as well. And it is good to be back. Pre-season can always feel a little bit long because everyone just wants to get going in the, the Premier League. But it's been an important pre-season for a number of reasons. But yes, yeah, uh, it feels like only yesterday I was stood next to you, Zoe, to be honest <laughs> with you. Well, this time last week we were playing Lazio and Leon in a in a double header. And that Leon result was something that was it was quite impressive, wasn't it? Yeah, obviously the, the game the night before against Lazio was probably a few too many goals for Eddie Howe's liking. We know he'd rather have a gritty 1-0 than a 4-3. Than a but yeah, the Leon performance was really good. Some notable names in their team. Um, interesting that the, the way Eddie formed his two playing 11s as well in terms of a couple of partnerships that he put in the same team, which was interesting to see going forward um, and how he may shape his Premier League team as well. But I mean, the, the strikers have been going well, um, even in the games before that as well. Um, Callum Wilson's been in the goals. Dominic Solanke's been in the goals, which is useful as well. Ryan Fraser obviously has been in the goals. Um, um, even Jack Stacey popped up with an absolute belter, of course, in uh, those games as well. So, yeah, I think all in all, two useful exercises. I, I do like the, the Friday, Saturday playing two strong teams rather than you know one one game where people maybe get 40, 50, 60 minutes. I like the way they do it. If you can attract two quality opponents like Lazio and Leon here, I think that's a good way to do it. And that's something that, that he's done every season, really. We've had the, the two at home last week and then the two away the week before. It just allows the squad to, to get minutes in the tank. Yeah, and I think you also need to make sure you're, you're mixing in some English teams as well in there because obviously you know playing Lazio and Leon is great, but that's not necessarily what you're going to face in terms of style and everything else in the Premier League. So I think it's important to, to go and get some minutes away from home, away from your, your home comforts, if you like, as well. So, yeah, the, the Brentford trip and obviously the West Brom trip before that as well. Um, and obviously the, the pre-season tour as well to, to Spain was, yeah, all really, really useful and seems to have put the squad in a good place going into the league. Talking of a good place, you mentioned Dominic Solanke. He's had two goals in pre-season and I know they are just friendlies, but that will do wonders for his confidence, won't it? Absolutely, because he had a couple of chances last year that he probably should have taken in the league and he should have his Bournemouth league account open by now already. So, yeah, and obviously, you know, more and more attacking competition this season. Not necessarily out and out strikers like Dominic Solanke is, but with the Harry Wilsons and the Dan Jumas and others coming in, the competition around that sort of front four, if you like, um, is, is increasing. It may change Eddie's shape, the way he wants to play, depending on who he's trying to get into the team in certain games. So, yeah, for Solanke, that's a huge confidence boost. The next one for him now is to take one of those chances when it comes in a, in a big game on a Saturday. And speaking of strikers, Callum Wilson, he's got three goals in pre-season and he, he, looks, he looks in a good position, doesn't he? Yeah, um, the, Wilson and King both, both look pretty sharp, actually, um, which is a real good good place to be, I think, over the uh, the summer. Obviously, both of them played international football um, over the summer, so ha had an extended season, if you like, and um, have ended up having a little bit of a break, but seem to have come back fit and firing. Um, I hope we're not sort of talking in you know, February or March, that the summer's catching up with them, if you like. Here now, they should be sharp, they should be fit. That goes for a number of players. Ryan Fraser, David Brooks, obviously, played internationals, then got injured. Even Harry Wilson's played internationals for, for Wales as well, so has had a short break. Um, Nathan Ake, a lot of players have had a... Jefferson Lerma have had a long, a long summer, um, but seem to be fit and firing and ready to go. Um, and hopefully, as I say, that won't catch up with them later in the season. And last weekend, as we said, we had two fixtures. Now, all four goalkeepers got 45 minutes, so so it's a complete lottery as to, to who's going to play tomorrow, isn't it? It's, it's, it's got to be the most competitive spot in the team at the moment. I mean, three of the four played last season, you know, even within the space of the last what month of the season, I think three of them played. Um, Ramsdale obviously did great at Wimbledon, um, has done really, hasn't conceded in pre-season. He's played the equivalent of two full games, hasn't conceded in pre-season. Um, it's very, very difficult to know which way Eddie will go. I, I did I speak to him this morning and say, did, would he have any hesitation in playing one of his young keepers from the start of the season when the pressure is on? Because let's be honest, Mark Travis did brilliantly in the Tottenham game. Palace game wasn't as comfortable for him, but those two games, end of the season, safety was secured there wasn't really any heat on them every game from the start of the season has a different type of heat on it so do you throw a Ramsdale or a Travers in there because if you do they will make mistakes and you'll have to ride with it and you'll have to put it down to their experience um, because I don't think you can chop and change as much as they did last season um, Asmir Begovic found it difficult um, eventually got the chop I would say he's I, I mean I don't know I would say he's the least likely to play and this may come back to bite me in the face but for me I think it will be between Boric and Ramsdale I think they're, they're the two, I reckon. I'm not sure which way round, 
But if I had to, if you made me bet now, Zoe, I would go Boric and Ramsdale will be the two in the 18. Well, we'll, we'll play this back next week we if, uh, if you're sure not you right. <laughs> if they're nowhere near the 18, yeah. <laughs> and um, we're going to come, come on to injuries a bit later on. But last week, it was great to see Steve Cook and Charlie Daniels back out on the pitch. Yeah, Charlie Daniels particularly, because that was a bad injury at the back end of last season. Steve Cook, I think that's going to be one he's going to have to manage. I think that's it's the same problem. Uh, I don't think it's going to go away. Hopefully, without rushing himself too much early season, he can manage his way through. Um, hopefully again with Chris Meppham uh, and Jack Simpson gaining a bit more experience because that's the one area the Cherries didn't really strengthen in terms of I mean Lloyd Kelly is a, a left-sided sort of defender so can play centre-half but obviously he's going to be out for uh, you know a few weeks yet so early in the season the cover is Meppham and Simpson really alongside Nathan Ake so uh, there may be that Steve Cook can't play every game but he, he'll be the you presume he'd be the captain. I mean, there's, there were so many captains last year as well that I'm not sure who gets the armband, but particularly if Steve Cook doesn't play, I've got no idea who gets the armband. Um, but yeah, hopefully, fingers crossed, Steve Cook will be okay. Well, someone who we haven't seen yet is new signing Harry Wilson, and he spoke to AFCB TV earlier the week following his loan move. Harry, welcome to AFC Bournemouth. How does it feel to, to be here? Yeah, it feels great Great to be here. It feels great to, uh, yeah, to find, finally get in the building, get... Um, get all the stuff sort of sorted and uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to meeting the lads and getting going. And we've all seen the rumours and the links over the last 24 hours, but what's it been like from your point of view and how did the, the loan move come about? Yeah, it's come across quite quickly really. Um, went into a train yesterday and that was when I first got told about it. So when I, yeah, when, when Liverpool informed, informed me that it was a possibility, I was really keen to, uh, yeah, to, to, to get it sorted. Uh, I, want, I want to be playing Premier League football and yeah, to be doing it uh, in a great, great team like Bournemouth, the style of play they, they, they like to play. I feel uh, I can fit right in here and help the team, team a lot. So yeah, I was desperate to get it sorted, and it, it's all, it's all happened quite quickly. And now I'm here. And you've had your medical, and you've had a look around the place. What are your first impressions of the club? Yeah, brilliant. I think the pitch is fan, fantastic. I've never actually been here before. I like how, how intimate the stadium is. I feel uh, the atmosphere when it gets going will be, be great. But yeah, like you said, I was just delighted to be in the building, get all the medical and that out of the way and now yeah, I'm really looking forward to getting training tomorrow with the lads. And how much of an influence was Eddie Howe on, on you coming here for, for the season? Yeah, he, he, was, he was massive. I spoke, spoke on the phone with him yesterday and yeah, the, thing, the things he was say, saying to me were brilliant. The, the way things I can fit, fit into his style of play and the way he helps and breeds young, young players, that'll be fan, fa fantastic for myself. So yeah, to speak with him was great and yeah, he was a big, big part of uh, making, making my decision easy, easier. Well, that was Harry Wilson speaking to AFCB TV. He certainly looks an exciting prospect, doesn't he, Chris? 18 goals in all competitions for Derby last year. Yeah, what a, what a coup to get him, I think. I mean, I'm sure the David Brooks situation accelerated that one through. Uh, it came around very quickly from all, all accounts. Um, he, this time last week, he had no, I don't think, inkling the move was happening. So, um, yeah, he spoke to Eddie the first time, I think the day before the move was completed. But yeah, I mean, he, he caught the eye in the championship last year. A couple of great goals, not none least than that free kick at Manchester United in the Cup. Um, yeah, number of goals he contributed. He, he says he prefers to play off the right and come in on his on his left foot, which basically makes him a, a like for like for David Brooks, really, um, in the way that the team shapes up. Um, a number of assists as well. I think he'll, you know, he full Welsh international. I think he'll prove a real, real asset. The one thing that I hadn't noticed till I started doing a bit of research for the, the game this weekend, he got 13 yellow cards last season, which, I mean, Jefferson Lerma, I've said, if you want to battle Jefferson Lerma for the most yellow cards, that is going to be some contest. But he did put it down to the fact he played a few games in central midfield for Derby and mistimed a few tackles last year. But he was surprised to hear it was 13. But uh, So that's a side of his game maybe that, you know, at least we see he's a bit of a competitor. But yeah, no, he's really, really really exciting um, and as we were talking about earlier on he'll have to have H Wilson on the back of his shirt because Callum Wilson I'm pretty sure will claim the seniority on the uh, the shirt name for sure. He certainly will and and one thing he said in his in his interview with AFCB TV was that he already knows a few familiar faces Chris Meppham he knows David Brooks and Dominic Solanke Jordan Ibe from Liverpool so for him that will really help him settle in won't it? I think that's a big thing as well because it's not just settling into the club and introducing you to people and you know b having people who are on your wavelength but also just the area and you forget you know moving from Liverpool to, via Derby and Harley and various other places down here it's completely different I mean living in Bournemouth particularly when the weather's like this um, is a lot different to living in for example Hull um, although Hull could be nice um, so yeah for, I think that's a real real big thing for in terms of enabling him to settle in uh, and as we're recording this Friday morning he's only had one day's training yesterday with the with the lads so uh, today was his second day ahead of the game uh, tomorrow 
but yeah, um, really useful to have Mepham. And I think uh, from all accounts, I saw a bit of banter in the uh, the training ground this morning. So I think he's, he seems to be settling in pretty well. And Eddie Howe's also brought in a, a couple of other young young British players. We've got Jack Stacey and, and Lloyd Kelly as well. Lloyd Kelly's obviously injured, but great to have you know our fellow youngsters around for, for him to settle in. Yeah, and also you know with the, the recruitment of those two, we have to be realistic. Simon Francis and Charlie Daniels, for example, who've been the first choice fullbacks for a long time. Of course, Adam Smith has sort of taken over since Simon Francis has been injured and, and you know, flip flop with him before that but the long term that's long term views they're long term signings um, because Francis and Daniels are both the wrong side of 30 now you'll get there one day Zoe don't worry um, the rest of us are off the, off the end of the cliff already um, but yeah so the long term long term view so Lloyd Kelly yes he's injured for six weeks now but he's here for the next four or five years hopefully at least and Jack Stacey I mean everything I hear about Jack Stacey is, is really exciting um, whether he's ready to fly straight into the Premier League I'm not sure. Again, it, it, it's choices to be made there. Rico at left back, Smith at right back, Smith at left back, Stacey at right back. I mean, the fans will have seen a little bit of Jack Stacey already. He runs all day, apparently, up and down the right flank. It just keeps going. Um, so I'm really excited to see him and how he adapts from League One last season to the Premier League, because that is a big jump. Well, someone who does have Premier League experience is, is fellow new signing, uh, Philip Billing. And, you know, what, what do you make of him? He, he played well here last year against Huddersfield. Yeah, well, I've liked him when I've seen of him. Um, he's, you know, again, what a presence. Six foot four central midfield. You don't get many of them. So extra height from set pieces because the Cherries aren't the biggest team. You know, Steve Cook and Nathan, I mean, Nathan Ake, he's not the biggest centre half you'll ever come across. And when Simon Francis hasn't been in the team, which has been quite a lot recently, the Cherries have noticed that his lack of height. So, uh, yeah, from that point of view, excellent lack of uh, extra height. Him and Lerma look at no, a nice little partnership together. Billing all is up and down as well. So while Lerma can, can sit a little bit, Billing will get box to box. And I, I do remember him playing well for Huddersfield. Um, was their player of the year last year. Um, fell out of favour a little bit towards the end. I don't think you saw eye to eye with their, their new manager too well. He's only been training with the under 17s and 19s in pre-season. So whether he is fit enough to start tomorrow, we saw a little bit of him here in the friendly last week. Um, he would be the one who maybe is a little bit short of minutes uh, from, from what I can gather. So uh, he may well start, but prob probably wouldn't last the game. But yeah, good signing, great signing. And one thing with him is it's worth remembering that he went away in, in the under 21 Euros yeah. with Denmark as well. So he hasn't had much of a summer either. Yeah, so maybe uh, maybe a little bit of residual fitness still there from that sort of longer season possibly. Um, so maybe that would help because a lot of the players who have played through the summer have commented on how they're still sharp rather than the fact they're knackered, basically. So, yeah, maybe hopefully with Phil Billing, that will that will carry over and he, he may be as fitter than we realise. And we've just spoken about Harry Wilson playing out on the wing, but Dan Juma, he provides another option as well and someone that, that Bournemouth fans might not know too much about. Yeah, uh, the other thing I've done this morning is to clarify exactly how to say his name because that's important for a commentator. The man I asked was... The, the next best thing to ask in him was to ask Nathan Ake, um, who, by the way, is not Nathan Aker, as Dan, uh, Nathan Ake uh, couldn't believe that Dan Juma had said no. that. It is definitely Ake, not Aker. Um, but it's Arnout. Arnout with a T on the end. Arnout Dan Juma. That is how to say it. Um, and again, from what I've seen, and it, it, I haven't seen too much, um, looks exciting. Looks like he's got pace and power, can play on both flanks. He's obviously already played a game for Bruges this season as well, so he's going to be sharp. So, yeah, I think it will be between him and Harry Wilson to play on the right. Um, whichever one doesn't play, what a great option to have on the bench. And as I said to the manager this morning, what they, they seem to have done this season is clear out, and I don't want to say Deadwood because that is, that's um, disrespectful, but clear out some of the fringe players, maybe some of those who wouldn't have been troubling the eleven last year. You think of you know, Mark Pugh, what a great player down the years, but in the last couple of seasons, he hasn't been a realistic starting option. Lisa Mousset the same. People like Conor Mahoney, obviously, you know, who's gone on, done great on loan elsewhere and has decided to move on now. Tyro Mings, those players haven't really been starting eleven options. What they've got in, re in replacement of those guys are guys who can play in the eleven and will be head scratches for Eddie Howe. And you think of the guys that aren't even fit yet, Stanislas, Lewis Cook, these guys who are going to be coming back as well. So the 11 looks much more competitive. And you mentioned there, I was going to bring it up myself, you know, Dan Juma, he's already played a, a game for Club Brews, which is, which is massive. His match fitness is going to be, should be perfect. Yeah, and obviously he needed a bit of time to get himself settled in, um, you know, played a little bit last week, but he'll have benefited from a, a full week's training as well, because I think everything's a bit hectic for him when he, he first signed and travelling over from Europe and everything. So yeah, I think he, he could be one we're, we're talking about by, by the end of the season, definitely. Absolutely. Well, our attention now turns to tomorrow's game against Sheffield United. And here's a look at what Eddie Howe had to say in his pre-match press conference. Enjoyed the summer from that perspective. The training was good. The game's good tests, different different uh, challenges that they pose tactically. The players that we've signed, we hope do really well for us. 
Um, the players we let go, we we wish them all the best. But in the main, uh, well backed and well supported. I think it's a real team effort here. I think uh, congratulations to everybody on on the effort they gave to to try and get the best squad that we could together. The whole squad in general has come back with a very good mindset. I think that's the most important thing. Mm -hmm. The long-termers, I won't name them all, but the long-termers are still are still out. And obviously the fresh ones we've had, David Brooks, Lloyd Kelly and Dan Gosling. Chris, I think, has done an outstanding job. Quite rightly won Manager of the Year or season, in, in my opinion. Um, can be hugely proud of what he's done at his local club. and how he's turned the club around and now they're back in the Premier League. So congratulations to him and his staff. Well, that was Eddie Howe speaking ahead of tomorrow's season opener against Sheffield United. And as you may have noticed, we have been joined by BBC Radio Solent's John Williams. And Willow, you were actually uh, out on the pitch last time we beat Sheffield United at the start of the 1987 season. Yes, a long time ago, but it was, uh, it was a really good win. First game of the season, Sean Brooks scored a marvellous volley from 25 yards uh, it was a real good day roasting hot I can remember big crowd very tense but we managed to get the 1-0 win it was a great result and of course playing them again at the start of this season it's really important to uh, get off to a good start as we saw last year yes always you know the start is is everything but it feels like listen to Ed that the the lads have had a real good pre-season you know fitness wise okay there's been one or two knocks that we you always hope you don't get, but uh, it seems to have gone really well. And uh, looking forward to the season so much, especially seeing the new players. There's, there's so much to choose from now. Ed's going to have some real problems with his uh, team selection with all that, all that talent. Of course, the most thing he's looking forward to is being back alongside me, of course, for the whole season, will I? Yes, I can't say I've missed you too much, <laughs> but um, it's been a long, a long summer without too much football, really. So I'm looking forward to getting back into things. And Chris, what do we know about the Sheffield United team, newly promoted and, and full of hunger? They spent a bit of money, haven't they? I mean, £10 million on Elise Mousset caught a few eyes, I think it's fair to say. I mean, he was their record signing at the time. They've since spent a bit more on Ollie McBurney uh, from, from Swansea as well. Ravel Morrison is a bit of a wild card signing for them. He's a bit of a lease Mousse in certain regards. You're not quite sure what he's going to produce. He's obviously had his off-the-field problems. Um, you know, one or two others as well, but they, they've got gone with the core of their championship team who they, they have a quite a unique way of playing. Um, the question is, have they added enough Premier League quality? That's the biggest, uh, or Premier League experience as well. That's the biggest question for me. We saw, for example, I mean, Cardiff struggled last year with uh, a, a lot of championship level players, really Fulham the same, didn't massively strengthen, came in with a lot of championship players and ended up paying the price for that so you know they have they have spent I think they spent more money in the last four weeks than they spent in the last 14 years I read somewhere um, which is a, a fair indication they have had a crack at it they've they've thrown some money at it Chris Wilder is a you know a canny manager he's not a fashionable manager by any means but he's a he's sort of served his apprenticeship through the years as a manager at Northampton and at Oxford at Halifax before that as well would you have played against him Willow he's a right back yeah, I don't remember too much about playing against him, but it, it, it's quite strange that, that the paths of him and Eddie have, have gone down the same sort of road, you know, done all the hard work with it when the club is in a lower league at Halifax and uh, then eventually, you know, getting through to the Premiership. He's done a fantastic job at Sheffield and it'll be... It'll be a really difficult game tomorrow, but uh, we're looking forward to it, I have to say. Yeah, and he's a real hero for the Sheffield United fans as well because of what he's achieved there. It's been a long time since one of the big Sheffield clubs have been in the Premier League, probably too long, really. And I think the United fans will uh, enjoy the bragging rights over Sheffield Wednesday this season, for sure. And one thing that's coming in this season is VAR. As Eddie Howe just said, it's going to be a game changer, isn't it, Willow? Well, it is. There's no doubt. I mean, I have to say, um, I haven't gone through the course that Eddie did. You know, they put him on the spot and... But it is going to be uh, really interesting how it works. You know, sometimes I watch a decision 10 times and I still can't make my mind up. So human nature will come into it, of course. You know, there'll be feelings of decisions being wrong or right. But I think the referees definitely need to help because the game is so quick nowadays. You can't, you can't get past that. And uh, it's going to be interesting, to say the least. We've sat next to each other for quite a few clangers down the years, both for and against Bournemouth, it's fair to say, but I think that's the one thing that VAR will eliminate. I mean, yes, it, it might hold the game up a little bit, but I think the average time for a review is something like 84 seconds. So actually, in the grand scheme of a game, as long as we're not seeing games that are going on for 105 minutes, um, I think that's what everyone wants to see, is the clangers eliminated. It will hopefully do that. There's going to be a bit of a betting in process, as there's going to be with a couple of the other new law changes, particularly the goal kick rule, which, again, is a centre-half wheeler. The fact that the ball hasn't got to go out of the penalty area now. As a, 
we've seen you know teams have evolved it by the centre half stepping into the penalty area because a striker was about to nick it, so the goal kick had to get retaken. I mean, as a centre half now, how would you fancy about that? Yeah, role? it's an, it's another game changer, isn't it? I mean, we've seen Kingy nick nick mm. a goal from from the goal kick, and it's going to be uh, quite interesting to see how, what people do. I watched the game locally last night, and um, I have to say they didn't they didn't. Uh, pick the ball up too much from the goalkeeper but I think it'll be different in the Premiership you know the teams that have the, the goalkeepers that have good feet are always going to want to play and it's, it's going to be a real uh, interesting one that one and There'll be a disaster as well on match of the day uh, maybe even this weekend there will be a disaster from one team in the Premier League trying a natty goal kick routine that goes wrong I think the other thing as well is that uh, you know there's, there's, there's three or four new changes isn't there but that, that one's going to be the most interesting I think but somebody will find a way they always do of, of gaining, gaining an advantage from it and that's going to be interesting. It's going to be a, certainly a big talking point and a big talking point from Bournemouth's point of view is, is the injury list. It's not looking as, as rosy as Eddie Howe would have liked, is it? It's not. I mean, they, they've been so unlucky last season with so many different injuries and then this season, you know, Dan Gosling picked up an injury just passing the ball with his left foot. David Brooks picked up an injury, a serious one, setting up a goal in a pre-season friendly. Obviously, Lloyd Kelly got a bit of a clattering tackle in, in training, which is a bit unfortunate, particularly for a new signing as well. When you look at the guys that are coming back, Lewis Cook, Simon Francis, Junior Stanislas, Charlie Daniels, all still working their way back to fitness as well. So I think that's one of the main reasons, particularly they moved for Harry Wilson, was David Brooks' injury. Um, Harry Wilson will probably play off the right-hand side or be certainly competing with Dan Juma for, for that role. So yeah, the injury list, I mean, it is pretty remarkable, isn't it, that, that you think last season was a one-off bad season and already two or three serious ones this season. Yes, I mean, I don't know the reason why these things keep happening, just bad luck, I suppose. Um, I don't, you know, things are uh, a lot different now in terms of the pace of the game, so, you know, perhaps that has something to do with it. But when you pick injuries up in training, that's very frustrating, but it happens to everyone. You, you just have to nuttle down and get on with it. There's, there's no way around it. And Willow, just before uh, we let you go and we leave all of you at home, I am going to ask you for a score prediction. <laughs> oh, well, uh, of course, 2-0 Bournemouth. 2-0 <laughs> Bournemouth? It already says 1-1. One, one, so uh... <laughs> Chris, do you want to hazard a guess? Uh, I think Bournemouth will win tomorrow. I do think it's a, a helpful start. I mean, Eddie Howe would never say that, maybe not until after the game, but beating Cardiff at home, a newly promoted team, I think Sheffield United, it, you'd expect it, them to take a bit of time to bed down. I think Bournemouth look a good squad this year. I think if, if the new players are ready to go, Philip Billing straight in, potentially. Dan Juma could be straight in. Harry Wilson's had a full pre-season with Liverpool. He could easily be thrown in straight from the start as well. So I think attacking-wise, it looks a real, real good squad. The only question mark, I think, is Steve Cook, um, whether he makes the game tomorrow with his groin injury. We saw him feature last week. So there might be, we may see, you know, probably Chris Meppen would come in. So um, to give you a short answer to a very long answer, uh, I think Bournemouth will win. I'm not going to make, I'm not going to go 2 0. I'm going to go 3 1. 3 1. Well, there you go. If you are over 18 and you do want to hazard a guess at the score for tomorrow's game, you can go onto Mansion's website and take part in their new game for this season. That's all from us today, but we'll see you here tomorrow at Vitality Stadium to cheer on the Cherries in the first game of the season. Bye for now.